What's up gamers? Today we're going to look at The Lost Dutchman. Let's check it out. To set up for the game, you're going to put these little tokens here, you're going to shuffle them up, they're all face down, and then you're going to put three face up in these two little spots, the one, two, three spot here. The rest of them will go face down on the rest of this little mini board here. You'll put the Lost Dutchman here, all the little pickaxes and shovel icons matching the players' colors right here. Of course, all the players will have their little miners, and they're going to start right here in the base camp. You're going to shuffle these tiles. You're going to put out stacks of five each like this. You're going to put the mining camp on the other end of the uh, board. And uh, each player gets to randomly select three tiles to flip over. So that's why I have here for a four-player game. Now, each player is going to get their own little player board. They can be any one of these characters. They have different abilities that can help them out. Sometimes special abilities. Sometimes they just have, uh, for instance, for him, he has just bigger uh, statistics than the others. Uh, so I have one here. What I do is I take my little icons. I have icons here that match up. I hit them over the green spot. So Vigor, and that's where I had uh, Foresight, Ingenuity started at a 2 for me, and Health started at a 3. And again, as you see, these are all random for each character. Some of them start with more health than others, or more in Foresight than others, and so on and so forth. Uh, she actually gets to start with a crystal, so I take the little icon like this that has a crystal on it and place it on her board. Now, what you're going to do is very easy. Each player also has their own colored die. I should mention that as well. And there's this big die here with a one, two, three, and this emblem here. So what players are going to do is the first player is going to roll, and they're going to move that many spaces, one, two, or three. And they can move anywhere they want. And let's say she moves one, two. Two. She can go here and fight something, or she can just stop if she wants to and collect this treasure. Or she can go over to a new one and flip it over and try it out, okay, and, and do what it says on there. Now, the, the big point of these is what do these tiles do? Well, first off, most of the tiles are confrontations. They're either disasters like a heat stroke or creatures like this little warthog here. And there are several different disasters and different types of creatures in the game. And basically, you're going to have to roll and try to beat the number indicated right there at the top, as you see. This is a 4 in Foresight. This is a 7 in Vigor. You can tell by the little emblems on there. So what you would do is I would take my die, and let's say I was somehow going after heat stroke, okay? And I have to roll a four or higher. Well, I get to count any points I already have in foresight. So I have two, so I just need a two or higher. And I did, I rolled a six, so I got an eight. So I beat that. When I beat that, I'm gonna take this icon, I'm gonna go up one in uh, foresight, so go up one in foresight, and this will count for one gold at the end of the game. Now, if I did not win that, let's say I rolled really low, then I would lose one foresight, and that would be it there, and that tile would stay there. But when I beat it, I take the tile, I take the treasure, and then I flip over the one underneath me. Now, I don't have to face this next thing here, which, ooh, that looks really awful, doesn't it? Another little creature there, but I don't have to face him. I face mine, and I'm done. And so then the next player would roll, and then they would move, and so on and so forth. So let me tell you about some of these tiles. These tiles can also be gold tiles here. They'll indicate the numbers can be from 1 to 10 on what these are, and if you land on one, you just take it. You have things like the bandit, which is really neat, which allows you to face off against other players and steal their treasure. Now, there are I items in the game as well that you can pick up. Here's the crystal. I, I start with a crystal. Uh, a crystal lets you defeat evil spirits. What's an evil spirit? Well, this is an evil spirit. The only way you're going to fight this evil spirit is if you have a crystal. And so you have to have one of these crystals to fight an evil spirit. Now, evil spirits are hard to beat, but they're worth a lot of points at the end of the game. Some of them are set collection, too. If you see here, it's very small print here. But it says, hey, the first one's worth five. You get a second one that's worth six. The three is worth seven each. Eight, uh, if it's you have four each. So 
uh, after a while, you kind of want to start defeating the same ones you defeated before. Like I said, set collection gives you more points. But anyway, if you didn't want to fight an evil spirit with the crystal, the crystal you can always disregard and get full health. So I can go up to five if I wanted to. Now, why is full health important? Because if ever you lose your health, then you're going to have to discard your lowest treasure. Uh, now, anytime you can also go back to the base camp here and restore your health to full health, or you can go up in one of the three attributes here. So if I wanted to go up one in vigor, I could if I'd made it back to base camp. Same thing with the mining camp as well. It does the same thing there, but that's just for people who are way over here and they don't want to go all the way back. They can just go to the mining camp and get those same um, benefits as well. Other tiles that are items that can help you in the game is this, uh, the, the pickaxe and the climbing gear. Both of them will let you re-roll on failed rolls. This one will let you re-roll against creatures. This one will let you re-roll against disasters. But they have alternate uses too. The pickaxe can help you bury a treasure card. When you bury a treasure card, let's say I have the seven. I don't want to take a chance of anyone being a bandit to steal it from me or the lost Dutchman coming at me, which I'll explain later. I could use my pickaxe and flip this over in my player area, and that way it's buried treasure and no one can touch it. Or the climbing gear basically lets you just take back-to-back -back turns, which could be good as well. Now, what do I mean about the Lost Dutchman? Well, if ever you roll this emblem here, that's the Lost Dutchman. You would move the Lost Dutchman somewhere on the board. You can move them maybe on the board here, just make sure no one goes that tile. Or you could place them, let's say I had a treasure card, and this is probably what you're going to use them in the game for. You can place them on another player's treasure card. That treasure card is worth zero at the end of the game if the Lost Dutchman is still on it, which is a bad thing. You don't want the Lost Dutchman to be on your treasure there. You can also move the Lost Dutchman right back here to his little gold mine because there is a uh, purpose here that you have him on the board here. In fact, these little six or sevens, I beat a four, which doesn't let me beat any of these, but if I had to beat this Bobcat here, let's say I made a successful roll against the Bobcat and beat him, let's flip the next one over there, and what I would do, since I beat a level 7, my little pickaxe can travel now. I had to beat a 6 or 7 to cross over here or cross over here. I'm going to cross over here. So when I do that, I reveal the next one. And next level is a 5 or 6. So I have to beat a 5 or 6 threat. It could be either creatures or disasters. And once I do that, I can move on to the next space. I can go here or here and then reveal it here. And of course, anyone who comes behind me, they'll already know what, what they have to beat to get there. Now what you're doing here, you're going on these winding paths and trying to get to the Lost Dutchman. Because if you can defeat the Lost Dutchman, he's going to be worth a lot of points at the end of the game, but you have to roll a 15, and that's combining all of your powers. Now, by then, hopefully you'll be super powerful to defeat the Lost Dutchman. That's one way the game can end if someone defeats the Lost Dutchman. Another way the game can end is if this water supply runs low. You have a stack of water supply cards, you'll stack one through six here and every time you draw a tile like so you're going to drop the water level so then I would just drop it down to a five now usually this is how the game's going to end or it has for a lot of my games here and when it gets down to one and then none then the game ends and you're going to add up all your victory points you're going to add up gold cards except unless they have the lost Dutchman on it of course and you're going to add up any little gold you got for defeating disasters or defeating creatures and of course, whoever has the most gold wins. Now, the game does come with event tiles here. They are optional to play with, but they can uh, have both good and bad events happen to your players during the game. And that's The Lost Dutchman. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Well, first off, I should mention, there are two little things I failed to mention in my review. One is, uh, buried in the desert are characters. They're alive, I guess, but you find them by digging them up. I don't know. Anyway, but these characters help you do little special abilities in the game. They're very self-explanatory. Also, on the other side of where the uh, Lost Dutchman is, is another type of game. To be honest, I have yet to play that version yet, and I know nothing about it. So I just uh, reviewed the base game here. Now, the reason I got this game is because it's from Crash Games. Crash Games has another game that I really love called Pay Dirt. And when I saw that they had made this game, I was like, oh, well, I'm a little bit interested. I was looking at this game regardless, and I was like, mm, should I get this? I went, wait a minute, that's Crash Games. Yeah, I got to get it. Uh, the quality of the pieces, the quality of the boxes, these boxes are super thick, man. I mean, they are tough, top-notch quality in a board game. Unfortunately, the board game is very dry and cut. I mean, this is roll, move, fight. Did you win? Yeah, you power, level up. Did you lose? Boo, you power down. 
And that's basically it. It's the same thing over and over again. Sure, you can. there's a lot of variety because you can shuffle up the tiles, there'll always be something different. Or you can always move around different areas. You'll be set collecting on different, you know, if you beat one Warthog or whatever they're called, you wanna beat some more so you can get more points at the end. But that's basically it. Um, so there's not much of a game in here. It's, it's a fancy little roll and move. Now that being said, it is staying in my collection because my nephews actually do enjoy it. For now, they enjoy it. It, I have a feeling this game would get old quick. So I don't really know if I can suggest it unless you're looking for something for kids or a family to play because it's not hard at all to play. It looks like it has a lot of strategy, but it's roll, move, fight, and then roll, move, fight again. And that's basically it. All right, gamers, that's all the time I have for now. Until next time, game on.